Apple's A20 and A20 Pro CPUs constitute the company's first leap to TSMC 2 nanometer process, offering breakthrough packaging technology and performance gains for the iPhone 18 lineup, debuting September 2026. These improvements combine cutting-edge lithography with architectural changes that potentially redefine smartphone capabilities. The shift from integrated fan-out to wafer-level multi-chip module packaging marks Apple's biggest architectural change in years. The wafer-level multi-chip module incorporates CPU, DPU, neural engine, and RAM directly onto the chip wafer at the wafer level, eliminating the silicon interposer entirely. This decreases production complexity while improving component communication times. Streamlined production employing molding underfill decreases material usage and process stages, helping counterbalance TSMC's predicted $30,000 per 2 nanometer wafer cost. Higher yields with fewer faulty chips enable Apple to grow production quantities while maintaining quality standards. The 2 nanometer gate all around transistor architecture gives roughly 15% performance increases over the A19 Pro while consuming 30% less power. This efficiency breakthrough could enable slimmer iPhone designs like the second generation iPhone Air or expand battery life dramatically without boosting battery capacity. Apple has acquired almost half of TSMC's initial 2 nanometer production capacity, leaving competitors like Qualcomm and MediaTek waiting. The A19 Pro previously shown exceptional efficiency core performance at near zero power consumption, and the A20 should increase these benefits dramatically. iPhone 18 Pro Max breaks 240 grams barrier. Let me make this point clear, and here's why. There's a revolution happening in Apple's design philosophy, and the iPhone 18 Pro Max is set to be the poster child. Rumors claim it could become the heaviest iPhone Apple ever sold, shattering the 240-gram limit that has stood since the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Heft is in. According to Chroma Unboxed, it will exceed 240 grams, which will make it the bulkiest iPhone in the company's history. Thickness conveys the same story. The iPhone 18 Pro Max is expected to measure roughly 9 mm, compared to the iPhone 17 Pro Max's 8.8 mm profile. In a category where a fraction of a millimeter impacts the feel in your palm, that is a deliberate step away from the thinner is better dogma of the past decade. Pocketable? Absolutely. Featherweight? No. 1. What's driving the size increase? Apple's priorities are apparent. The bulk is a trade for capacity. The headline change is a battery system that tries to reset expectations. The iPhone 18 Pro Max is said to contain a special steel-cased battery system, technology borrowed from playbooks, more common in premium electric automobiles than in phones. That stated steel enclosure does two jobs that explain the weight. It allows more aggressive battery chemistry that would be dangerous in standard aluminum housings, and it forms a thermal base that ties into the phone's broader cooling architecture. Think of it as a pocket-sized power plant, intended to sustain peak performance significantly longer than existing gadgets. Heat is dealt elsewhere, too. The handset will purportedly contain a stainless steel vapor chamber cooling mechanism, which adds considerable heat dissipation to a consumer phone. The objective is not only comfort. It is keeping the A20 chip at full power during long 4K video edits, complex AI computation, or marathon gaming sessions without the traditional dip. Camera improvements demand more room. As per observers, photography is experiencing its biggest hardware shakeup since Apple's early computational effort. The iPhone 18 Pro Max will purportedly add variable aperture technology to the main camera, offering consumers manual control for the first time on an iPhone. Want more light for a night street scene than stop down for a sharp group image in daylight? That is the idea. Simple and surprisingly empowering. Variable aperture demands precision mechanics, not simply software techniques. Instead of a fixed opening, the camera incorporates motorized iris parts, position sensors, and calibration circuitry that must keep precise alignment across millions of pictures. Those pieces take room, plain, and simple. The telephoto system benefits too. The anticipated 48-megapixel telephoto shooter will utilize a wider aperture, which demands for bigger sensor elements and more sophisticated lens assembly. Larger sensors absorb more light and detail, larger apertures improve low light and create true background blur. All of it needs room inside the frame. 
The front-facing display is another huge lift, the kind that recalls the original Face ID launch. The rumored migration to hole-in-active area display technology relies on laser micro-drilling tiny holes inside the active pixel field. The result is an ultra-compact opening with Face ID components moved under the display. That leap necessitates new calibration and layouts. Face ID now has to project thousands of infrared dots through the display stack, so Apple adds in hardware for light transmission adjustment, beam coherence, and sensor calibration. The neat little hole punch on top hides complexity that feels closer to pro optics than phone trivia. Screen sizes will presumably stay put, the Pro at 6.3 inches and the Pro Max at 6.9. What changes is the under-display biometric technology, which needs pixel-level alignment with the inferior projection mechanism to perform invisibly. The performance benefits have their own costs in space and heat, which is why the cooling work above vital. The speculated A20 chip built on TSMC's superior 2 nanometer process promises a substantial jump, although squeezing billions of tiny transistors into the same slice of silicon still drives temps up under prolonged stress. Hence, the steel battery frame and vapor chamber feel less like bonuses and more like requirements. Connectivity is another significant swing. As per analysts, the phones would feature Apple's new C2 Series 5G modem, a step away from Qualcomm. First-generation parts frequently need extra room for power management, signal processing, and thermal control before they can be downsized. Early days, bigger imprints. Memory adds to the stack. The standardizing on 12 GB of RAM across the portfolio implies more modules, stronger power supply, and tighter memory management circuitry. More capability, more heat, more space. All of them speak to a clear bet. People will exchange a little sleekness for a lot more headroom. The iPhone 18 Pro and Pro Max's September 2026 launch allows Apple time to soften the rough edges, but the basic decisions reflect a long-run plan, not a one-off diversion. The steel battery alone could establish new benchmarks for power supply and temperature control. Pair that with variable aperture cameras, and you have photography that nudges into workflows once reserved for dedicated gear. Add the sophisticated cooling and prolonged peak performance becomes the norm, not a two-minute sprint. Bottom line, the iPhone 18 Pro Max grows heavier and thicker on purpose. Apple is betting users will accept the heft in exchange for functions that used to be off-limits to a pocket gadget. It does not read like Apple losing its design edge. It reads like a firm shedding an old limitation to create place for something bigger. The iPhone 18 is also likely to have a customizable aperture for its main camera. This would enable users alter how much light hits the sensor, boosting low-light photographs and providing photographers more control over their images. Unlike other competing models, which only provide fixed apertures, Apple's implementation might represent a huge leap for mobile photography. Design enhancements are also on the way. While the iPhone 17 Pro had an aluminium chassis with a visible glass piece at the rear, the iPhone 18 Pro is claimed to have a more consistent design, minimizing the color contrast between materials. This tweak could make the phone appear sleeker and more sophisticated across all color combinations. The Financial Times initially stated that Tim Cook was ready to reveal his retirement plans sometime between late January and June 2026. However, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman promptly criticized this timing as plainly false, adding that there are few signs internally, suggesting Cook is prepared to step down anytime soon. According to Gurman, Cook continues to be deeply involved in Apple's long-term product roadmap, including AI programs and future hardware cycles. Meanwhile, John Turnus, Apple's senior vice president of hardware engineering, remains the greatest frontrunner to become the next CEO. At 50 years old, Turnus has already established his leadership credentials, most notably by managing the Mac lineup through the historic shift from Intel CPUs to Apple Silicon. His ability to handle massive hardware overhauls and maintain product stability places him as a natural successor with the strategic mindset required to lead Apple's next decade. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more tech news and updates.